Good day, and welcome to Harris McSheffrey Music. Today, I'm going to talk about the four chord progression from Julie Duaron's song Gone Gone from the album Julie Duaron and the Wooden Stars. I don't know why she uses the same word twice in the title of this one, but it reminds me of Jacob 2 2 by Mordecai Richler. Note to self this is an International Women's Day video. Get back on topic! Okay, before we get carried away any further, let's talk about the four chord progression that makes up the song. The song starts with an interesting voicing. It's a G chord, but the B is in the bass. The third of the chord is in the bass. It sounds like this. So, normally with a G chord, you have the root in the bass for root position. You have G, B, D. So, you, so you get your root, G, skip the second, go to the third, major third, skip the fourth note, get the D, that's how you get a G chord. G is the root, B is the third, D is the fifth. However, what Julie Duaron does is interesting. She puts the B in the bass, which is the third, so we get first inversion, because Take the top of one note, put it up an octave, you've inverted it. First inversion. Second inversion would be D, G, B. Position again. So Julie Duaron is using a G chord with the third in the bass, so it's first inversion. Then she goes to an interesting chord from here. Now this is the chord from Julie Duaron that I've never really heard anybody else use in a song, and certainly not in a four chord loop song. So she's the first person I've heard use this chord. It's a bit like a C chord, but instead of having the expected root, third, and then the, the fifth, and then she uses the second as well replacing the third, and she has the sixth replacing the fifth, so she gets, instead of this, she gets this instead. So here's how she picks it finger style. So the string order she picks in is string five, two, three, four, fifth, two, second, third, fourth, same order. And then the third chord she uses plays like this. So, so what we have is a D, an E, a G, and an F sharp. Now, voice from bottom to top, this is, you got your D, your F sharp, now you've got your G is your fourth or the eleventh go up an octave, and then you have the ninth, or the second, turn this one up an octave, to get the E. And then, the fourth chord, here's an interesting one, so we have E, F sharp, G, D, E. Now the lowest note in this chord technically is the D, but the E is the, taken as the root because Julie Duaron's bass player plays the low E as the root, which clarifies the harmony. So what we have to play this G chord in first inversion, we have, I'll try to get close up to the camera so you can see it. What you have is the second fret of the A string the D G strings are open, and then the third fret of the B string. I only have one camera at a time, unless I use my computer. So, for the best angle, this is what I try to do. So, the string picking is like this. Fifth, second, third, fourth, fifth, second, third, fourth, etc. And 
So you can see the chord shape here. And then the next chord is 3rd fret of the C string, 2nd fret of the G string, the D and the B are open. And then we have the 5th fret of the A string, 4th fret of the D string, the G string is open, and then the 5th fret of the B string. And then we have, for the next chord, the 7th fret of the A string. The F sharp is the 7th fret of the B string. So we get these interesting voicings here. So you get an E minor ish voicing, E minor 9 technically, without the 5th. Except the D is in the lowest note of this guitar chord. But the bass plays a low E, as I mentioned earlier, to get the low note. So here's the chord progression again. G in first, G in first inversion, C, D, A, B chord, the D with an added fourth and second, E minor 9, So as you can see, there's only four chords in this song. However, Julie Duaron's motion between them and the choice of chords is interesting. So the first chord is pretty straightforward from, with an inversion for some flavor. Although she later treats it as a B minor on When you're gone Yes, when she says when you're gone, she adds the F sharp in the melody. When you're gone. Now that makes it B minor-ish, because the F sharp is the fifth of the B. Although you could still technically look at that as a G major seventh in first inversion. Or you could look at it as B minor with an added flat sixth. Anyway, the last three chords of this progression have the distinct quality of having adjacent letter names next to each other in the musical alphabet, but getting different chord qualities depending on what letters are used and how it's voiced. For example, the second chord of the progression I mentioned is A, B, C, and D notes. The way it's voiced, well, here's how it goes, <laughs> well. This might sound like a bit of a Seinfeld ripoff, but anyway, you got your A, you got your B, you got your C, and you got your D. Well, technically, how would these notes sound like right next to each other? Well, let's see if I can remember the guitar voicing for this. So here's the voicing. What these would sound like right next to each other is like... This. A bit dissonant, if you repetitate them well. A bit wonky sounding or spicy, depending on your perspective. But anyway, Julie Dwaron drops the C and the D down an octave from this to get this. Anyway, the third chord does a similar concept but with different letters of the alphabet, musical alphabet. So you got your D, your E, your G, and your F sharp. Excuse me. Anyway, we have D, E, F sharp, and G, which, which likewise to the which would sound like this right next to each other as a cluster. Hmm, a bit shimmery, but here's how Jules Duaron does it. Sorry, wrong note. Anyway, it still works with the song because it's in the key of E minor. 
it's in the game E minor. And the fourth chord uses the exact same letter names, but voiced differently, so we get... Instead of D, F sharp, G, and E, we have E, D, G, F sharp. The same letter names. <laughs> well, guess what? But they're voiced differently, so we get a different feeling out of the chord. What this proves is that you can take a chord made up of adjacent letter names in the alphabet, voice it differently, and get different feelings out of it. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I wish you all good health and peace of mind.